Welcome to story time. We're talking about gratitude. And last week, I really introduced this idea of a precursor to the practice of gratitude. And that is the emotions of thankfulness. And yet we can't really count on emotions to show up when we want them to. Hence, we're going to talk next week about the power of choice, particularly when it comes to gratitude and thankfulness. But today's story is about really, I want to just relive a bit of, a, of an experience of my own. And I want you to consider for yourself, perhaps something that happened to you, something that was not your preference, or as one of my wise little teachers taught me, not my favorite. That's how she would talk about food she didn't like. Rather than saying it's disgusting, which another little teacher used with me with tuna casserole, <laughs> this friend would say she was literally four or five at the time. And she would say if I served her something she didn't like, she would say, mm, it's not my favorite, which I thought was such a compassionate way of rejecting something, but yet honoring our own desires, our own likes and dislikes. Gosh, it took me until I was 40 before I realized I didn't really like Brussels sprouts, even though I kept trying to eat them. I don't like them, Sam, I am. <laughs> so here's the point. Gratitude. 15 years ago, I had a bicycle accident, right? And I am an experienced cyclist, rode my bike cross country, self-contained, all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't new to the practice. And yet I was out of practice because it had been 10 years between my cross country trip and this little excursion to remember, to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of my cross country bike trip. So I hadn't been riding my bike a lot because I was a little preoccupied and busy with raising children and building a business and establishing a home here in Frederick. So it wasn't right away that I came to gratitude for this accident that truly in all honesty, could have killed me this close. Thank goodness for my helmet. Thank goodness for good emergency intervention and for being with other cyclists who noticed when I had fallen behind and not shown up. My point is initially, yeah, there was a thankfulness. There's a, a relief of I'm going to get the help that I need. That emotion was there once I was came to enough to be conscious. I can remember laying in the urgent care and feeling that gratitude of, okay, there are people here who can help me. I can even remember being in the transportation, the, the ambulance and thinking, I wanna make sure that I don't make this worse. I'm not a bigger problem. So I was telling jokes in the ambulance to try and alleviate my own fear, right? That was my self-soothing technique but also to, let's be honest, to show the emergency techs that I wasn't a complete mess. I wasn't a failure for having fallen on my bike. That was my ego all wrapped up. But in the years since the accident, the successful <laughs> recovery, I, I laugh because I'm not sure how much of it I have regained, how much have I have had to reframe and recontext. Peter says I was as forgetful before the accident as I am now. I don't know if that's the case or not because fortunately for me, this is where gratitude comes in again. I don't remember. What I do remember is how frightened my son was. Now he was two just turned to when I had my accident. And so approaching three, when I started to reintroduce life into my daily living. In other words, the first day that I got dressed in something other than loungewear, it scared my son. He's like, where are you going? I didn't realize, I didn't fully understand that he didn't remember that I used to go to work, that I used to shower all by myself and get dressed and go out into the world. Now, this particular day, we were just going to go to the cul-de-sac and ride our scooters around in a circle, right? Because I was still literally in rehabilitation, mentally, physically, emotionally. 
but he was a nearing three-year-old little boy who needed to move, who needed to be outside, who needed to have life. So his awareness, his noticing that something was different was the practice of recognition, recognition that shift is happening. I was just commenting this morning to the yoga living circle that we've done these shifts, these seasonal shifts, a new birthday, a new holiday every year. And yet, if we don't cultivate that mindfulness of paying attention, we don't recognize the shift. We don't get better at practicing how to engage, how to embrace, how to live through to be better on the other side of this shift. So my son called me into a presence that I was really a little bit unaware of, partly because of the concussion, I'm sure, but also partly because it wasn't my reality. He's little. He didn't remember life before my accident. So recognizing that shift, then in turn, I acknowledged it in words and in actions by helping him to the level that a three-year-old can understand Yeah, we're just going outside, honey. We're going to go outside and play. Mama just put on different clothes. It's okay. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere to affirm what might have been a fear creeping in based on this unfamiliarity. Maybe you have some experience with that too. When something feels unfamiliar, that first trigger can often be diagnosed by this brain as this is bad. Beware, run away, shut down, don't do this. And yet, when we've got a reassuring community, a loving parent, caretaker, or even our inner wisdom that says, it's okay, baby, it's okay, give it a try. What can you be with? Acknowledge the fear, acknowledge the challenge, acknowledge the transition. This is what I call observe and comment, right? That's it. This is the practice of being mindful in the moment. But it's also the first two steps that then bring us to appreciation. And yeah, it took me a little while, years, in fact, to get to the point where I can honestly say, I am so grateful for the accident that caused a major interruption to my life, to my daily living, that could have caused my death, but didn't. So yes, thankful. So thankful. And I'm thankful that my my family, my husband, and a few dear friends stood by me through that transition. But that is different than appreciation for the actual impetus to this transition, this accident. And appreciation is where we can, yes, cultivate gratitude, cultivate that mindfulness of I appreciate this by choosing to use this intervention, to use this shift as an opportunity to live better. In other words, kind of picked up the snow globe and shook it up. And when I set it back down, I was able to begin again in choosing how to live more mindfully, how to integrate compassion into my daily practices of living. Now, this was fortunate because this is also the time that I was introduced to yoga. And honestly, I don't know that I would have ever practiced yoga were it not for the fact that I couldn't do the things that I did before my accident. I couldn't go back to bicycling right away. I certainly couldn't run. I couldn't even hardly put a casserole into the oven. I was so damaged and wounded from injuries of impact. So my friend invited me to yoga. The practice met me where I was in my weakened, broken state and invited me to just be as I am. There was no expectation of performance. Boy, was that a new technique, right? To think about just practicing in order to just breathe and to show up. This was what began the recalibration of my heart space, of my mind space, of my definition of what it meant to live and hence to live vibrantly, intimately with prana. Now, the truth of it is that it wasn't easy. Those first few years of transition were actually, well, I think they were probably harder on my family than they were on me because, again, I couldn't recognize them. 
I didn't even recognize what a mess I was in order to ask for help. So in that way, hmm, that lack of recognition and therefore the acknowledgement was really the burden of my family. And hearing the story sense of seeing pictures that <laughs> now my kids were eight, five and, and three, right? Somewhere in that age that they took pictures during this time, right? It's the only memories I have is the pictures that they took cockeyed, cut out, right? I mean, they were little. So I'm grateful <laughs> for the gift that these pictures can retell the stories that I simply don't remember. So think about something that was in your life, perhaps, that wasn't, wasn't your favorite. If you could have skipped it, you would have, and you certainly wouldn't have wished it on someone else. And yet, in hindsight, after the fact, after it has been transformed by way of digestion and introspection, based on recognition, acknowledgement, and cultivating even a sense of appreciation, how you've grown, improved even, in the nature of becoming more true to yourself as a result of that challenge. And is that not how our most powerful growth happens throughout our lives. And so the practice really can be practiced by paying attention to the little shifts. We just finished daylight saving time, Sunday, early Sunday morning. And despite my best intentions to go to bed on time, I didn't. But I was mindful about it in which case noticing how I'm walking into these shifts is the mindfulness practice. The due diligence of paying attention with focus, with discipline, with mm, grit even, might be a, a way that ducks it. I forget her first name right now, but she wrote a, a book about this idea of discipline and cultivating grit in the process of transitioning. That this practice is important, but it's a focused, deliberate practice. And so whatever is in transition in your world, can you show up with recognition? Name it, acknowledge it, see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, feel it. And then how can you reframe it so that it's not the victim causing impetus, but the growth, the transformation, the invitation to your own blooming and becoming. I don't want to go back to living how I was living before yoga, before my accident. The two are intertwined inextricably in my experience and in my story. And for that, I am grateful. And I hope that you can stay in the process of practice, of introspection, of observing and commenting to get to the point where your injuries, accidents, traumas, your not my favorites can become a place of blooming, becoming, transformation, growth, beauty, and living intimately with prana. Share your stories whether it's journaling for your own keeping, whether it's with your loved ones or reach out, share your stories because it's through the sharing of these stories that we can recognize and acknowledge what has facilitated our transformation and growth. And in that sharing, we shift the perspective and gratitude is available. Be well, take care of you and take care of those around you, whether you know them and love them or not. This is the practice of living yoga. May you breathe deeply and move freely. Labor lovingly and live vibrantly. Namaste. any thoughts, questions, or reflections. Otherwise, email or text them to me. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are.
I've heard you tell this story about your bicycle accident a couple of times, but this is the first time, I don't know what detail it was that really made me feel like, whoa, Peter is incredible. And I, I missed this detail so many times now. Of, I got this feeling of like crazy gratitude for him for being there for you and especially um, for the kids. Thinking yeah. like about a lot of times he's like, you don't want kids, they're terrible. Like thinking that in mind and then considering all of this, it's like, holy cow, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, he he is um, he is my grounding, right? He is a hero to me on so many levels. I'm so thankful and grateful for him. And yet I know as well that I only know this much of what that was like for him. We often get consumed in the story of the victim and forget to broaden our perspective to recognize how that impacts those around us. Because there's a story of the victim, there's a story of the hero, there's a story of the observer. And it's truth when all of those can be held simultaneously. That's where the truth of, of living yoga rests in that ease. Thank you for sharing that. That's a really wonderful perspective and hopefully can then be used to shift back to the, your own roles of when you're playing the support, right? Whether it's parent, whether it's partner, whether it's child for an aging parent, that our role as witness, as space holder, as caretaker is hard, almost harder, I think, than those of us who are the victims recovering from an accident or an injury. Great, have a Thank great day.